Come in, speak. I'm your co-host, J.R. Stewart. And good evening, everyone. I'm your co-host, Tommy Duncan. And we want to give a big shout out to Liquid for our theme music. And today, Tom, we have another uh, fascinating uh, topic to discuss. Uh, we're going to get into the uh, whole uh, issue of, I guess, uh, single parent, single parenting, or yes. households that are pretty primarily run by women, uh, single parent, um, and how much of a problem that could be or is. Yeah, and, and really our goal tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is to talk a little bit about it, but from a, a man's perspective, to give advice to those parents uh, who are raising single children. Uh, you know, in particular, you know, the majority of our single female-headed households are headed by the mother, and uh, clearly that can be a challenge, especially when raising sons, but not that it's not a challenge when raising daughters as well, with the absence of a father in the household. Well, that is true, Tom. So here's the deal. Um, the last two weeks, I've been actually researching this topic for another video. And um, Tom, I did not realize. So you have people like Larry Elders and Candace Owens and maybe Officer Taylor and some other people out there in YouTube land who speak out on the issue. When they say the number one issue affecting the black community is absentee fathers, uh, it's almost an understatement because unless you put that in proper context, not just as a number one issue, Tom, number two would be 100 miles away if, you, if you're measuring in distance. In fact, two through 100 wouldn't even come close to comparing to the number one issue. So <clears throat> all these studies that I read over the last two weeks and there was not one study that said anything positive about a uh, single parent household. Not one. Or as they say in, uh, in Bonton, now one said anything positive about being a single parent. And every issue affecting mothers, children, adults, today in crime, every one of them, every issue, social issue, seem to trace back to an absence of fathers in the home. Yeah, uh, it, it, it creates a lot of uh, issues, um, economic, social, and otherwise. And in our community, it, is, it has been a disaster when we look at the last two generations, at least, of um, households uh, in America, <clears throat> in the black in particular, that are primarily um, driven by black women. And that's not to say that black women have not put in the effort and done a lot of great things in terms of keeping our families together. Because uh, unfortunately, with a lot of factors uh, that have been targeted against black men in America, uh, I mean, even if we look at the, from 1619, um, through the Emancipation Proclamation and through the middle part of the 20th century, Jimmy, uh, most of our households did have uh, a mother and father in them. And of course, uh, the, the disintegration of that began to happen in the 60s and 70s, and it has caused a lot of social issues, a lot of economic issues, uh, a lot of things. But uh, we, can, we can talk briefly about it, Jimmy, but we've got to figure out, uh, you know, what do we do to fix this as well? Well, Tom, first of all, um, I mean, this is a very complex issue, and you're right that the deterioration started in the 60s, and it has been pretty much completed today, where it's become pretty routine. So the first thing is black men have to step up and realize that we cannot walk away from our responsibility of raising children. If you father a child, then you need to stick around and raise that child and be responsible for that child. Walking away and leaving it to the state and leaving it to the mother to raise that child or children by herself is wrong. It's wrong morally and it's wrong spiritually and it should be a criminal offense um, to do so. <clears throat> Well, uh, I mean, I can't disagree with you in terms of the, the moral and ethical responsibility of um, of a man who was a part of bringing a child to the world, being responsible. Uh, but you have to often look at both sides sometimes. Uh, you know, there's a reason 
uh, that this happened. There was a reason that the black male was separated from the black female uh, institutionally. Uh, there is a reason, unfortunately, that black women in our community are left holding the bag. And so, you know, I would agree it's a very complicated issue, uh, but it's something that we have got to start fixing. And, and Jimmy, we are so far uh, behind. Well, Tom, we have to start. We have to start reevaluating our values, and we have to stop associating ourselves with people who don't share those values. So, first of all, don't stop associating, hanging around, supporting <clears throat> TV, media. Any, any group, organization, or entity that doesn't have strong family values. It doesn't, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. It doesn't uh, help when you look at TV and the single parent household is glorified or the black man is run through the ringer. There are, there are very few positive images of a black man on television. So social programming continues to tear down the black man to destroy his self-image to make him believe he's not worth anything. And so if he does, if he believes he's not worth anything and doesn't have anything to contribute, why would he want to stick around? And especially when the message of society is for every step you take forward, someone's going to push you back two and three steps. You know, we've been told this lie since we were kids. At least I was. And I know there are black folks out there that's going to deny that they were ever told this by adults in their lives. But I distinctly remember hearing these messages growing up as a kid. <clears throat> So if we're going to continue to listen to those who do not have our, our best interests at heart and follow their dictates, we're going to continue to have this problem. And to simply talk about it, I mean, there's no easy solution to this other than we have to change. You know, we have to change our values. So when you have people who say, well, you, you know, the black man can't make it in America. Well, did anyone tell the Caribbean blacks that? Did anyone tell the Nigerians that? They do quite well in America. You know, and some of them are darker than us. And so it doesn't seem like America is bothering them or keeping them from their success and keeping their family, keeping them from having their families intact. So I'm not trying to buy all the lies and excuses that are pumped out there by the excuse makers and the haters as to why we're dysfunctional. We are dysfunctional on purpose. They made us this way, but despite that, we have to come together and overcome it. So we. we so there are a couple of things, Jimmy, that, that I picked up that I, I would agree. The, the, the question is how you navigate it, because I believe that I've read some studies in the past that um, I don't know if they were Nielsen ratings or otherwise that, that, that said on, uh, in the average black household, <clears throat> I think the television is on 12 hours, hours a day at least. 12? I thought it was 8, so it's gone up. Man, no, and I was just guessing at 12, but if it's 8, and I'll be surprised. I mean, that, you, you that, that's, that, that's one third of your day. That is. You got to remember, you got to sleep. So, if your television is on in the house, on average, eight hours a day, you've got to sleep at least six or seven hours a day. I know, Jim, you probably don't sleep two or three hours a day. Man. But, you know, if you've got to sleep and the house is on eight hours a day, then in your waking hours, you've got to work, you've got to be at school. What that means is that when everybody gets home, the television is programming you. The television, yes, is, raising is. You. The, the television is raising your kids. You know, I don't know if you remember this, but back in the 70s and early 80s, there was this concept called the latchkey keys. Yes. You know, they, they came home from school, they had they a put key. put the key around the neck. They exactly. let themselves home. So they, they make themselves a sandwich remember, and watch the television. This is right around the time that you see the skew of our households being broken up and you see more single parent households. And so you don't have mm -hmm. that other parent there who's going to be there when the child gets home. That key has a kid. I mean, that kid has a key with a little uh, piece of yarn or something around their neck with a key on it. They go in the house, they, turn up, they put on the television, and they wait till mom or, mom or dad uh, gets home. And so literally, I remember in the 70s and the 80s, this whole concept of the last key kid. And that, I believe, was the beginning of the end. And the reality of it is our households, unfortunately, are at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to single parent households in America. And so I would agree with you. The question is, how do you get those televisions turned off? Because at the end of the day, if you only have one parent and a kid left to his own means is going to do what they want to do, which means they're going to probably sit down and watch the TV. Now maybe it's probably doing something on their phone using social media. 
uh, are, are doing whatever they want to do on their phone or their laptop or whatever it is. But the problem is there is very little parental control when you have one parent, and that goes back to the singular problem. We've got well, to, time to go to the source. The family we, 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 we have to first get our young women to stop buying to the concept that it's cool to have a baby for a person that you're not married to. I mean, that just has to stop. There's nothing cool about that. Um, the, Jimmy, how, the, how, how do you convince them of that? Well, I think there are enough uh, women out here today, now that we've gone through this social experiment for a couple of generations, who should speak up and testify. And not that you're not doing your best. Uh, we'll, we'll give you your kudos for that. Um, but women, older women, have to speak up now and start um, educating younger girls and younger women that this is not a cool life. Uh, I've seen several studies that suggest and show that there's a correlation between depression and alcohol and drug use among women who are, who are raising children by themselves. Now, I can imagine the single distress that's placed on a, on a single parent in that situation. Kids are expensive. They're time-consuming. You know, they want to eat all the time. You got to provide a place for them. You got to roll them to different places, to games, to practice. You know, you got to buy them clothes. Um, and then you got to try to uh, spend some time talking with them to share your wisdom with them. They, that's a lot and work. And to get all get that all done uh, in an eight-hour time span. So I can imagine all you want to do is come home, turn that TV on, and put them in front of it, and take a break and, and, and check out every now and then. Although that television is detrimental, there is nothing positive on television for uh, a young black male that's coming up and becoming a young man. I was going to see is other black men being gangsters, selling drugs, going to jail, and dying. That is not the, the message that you want to send to your children. So uh, I would say, one, we have to turn the television off. That's only part of the problem. The other problem is we have to get our young ladies to cross their legs. I'm sorry to, to, to say it that way, but uh, like I said, there's nothing cool about getting pregnant for someone that you're not married to, especially if you can't afford to take care of the child. Now, if you if you have if you have wealth, you have a sizable income, and you're one of those women who say I don't need a man and truly don't need one, then go for it then. But for the 75 percent of our children that are being born to unwed teenage mothers, I'd imagine that most of those young girls are not financially able to support the children that they're bringing into the world by themselves. I would agree, Jimmy. And I mean, this this is, it's difficult because they are reinforced in so many areas that being a single parent is the norm. I taught for a couple of years after getting out of college. And, you know, I actually taught in my old high school. You were a teacher? Taught, yeah, yeah, I taught for a couple of years. After oh, I didn't school. know that. I taught, taught in my alma mater and taught at a couple of other schools. And what I began to see, this was in the early 90s, you know, it, it began to be very, very disturbing because I saw, okay, let me back up. When I was in school, typically if a girl got pregnant, usually she ended up quietly dropping out of school. She might go live with another relative, a grandparent or something like that, another area, or they would go to another school and then they would have the child. They may come back or they may transfer schools, but it was at least, Jimmy, somewhat of a, it, it, it wasn't actually no, the norm to have children in junior high, in high school. It was an enema. And now, starting in the early 90s, I had young girls who I had taught in that high school saying, well, hey, hey, Miss Duncan, and you know, look, you want to see a picture of my baby? And I'm like, what, are you kidding me? You're still in high school. You know, and, and now, unfortunately, Jimmy, it has become the norm, it has become acceptable, and nobody is really willing to have the tough conversations, you know, with our young girls, with our young women, I mean, with our young girls, with our young men, and quite frankly, Jimmy, it's come to a point now where adults are afraid to talk to their children. Well, you're right, Tom, it has become the norm, and there's no social shame to it. So, I mean, you, you, you talk about your experience in high school, but there was a time in our community that if you found yourself with child and no husband, you had to move. You had to go to another state, another city, and you would go there, and then you would tell people 
that the father died in the war or he got hit by a bus, that, that, that you were married and the, and, the, and the father of your child is dead and now you're a widower by uh, trying to raise his child. So people would understand that. Just saying that um, I'm having a child and I don't know who the father is or the father's a deadbeat, don't want to be involved, uh, we raised a child. I mean, that just wasn't acceptable uh, before 1960. So we may have to go back to trying to have a system where it's just not acceptable. That we don't glorify this, we don't praise you, uh, we don't want to sit, not that there's anything wrong with your children, I'm not trying to blame the children in, the, in this because they didn't have a choice to be brought into this world. People made that decision for them. But it's certainly, we can't be patting people on the back and giving them kudos for doing something that we know is detrimental to them and to society as a whole. And, um, Tom, if you, if you read the studies and see just how bad it is, I mean, obesity rates, alcohol, drugs, crime, um, jail, death, even the unborn child is twice as likely to die in the womb for a mother who's uh, going into a pregnancy by herself versus one that has a uh, husband in her life. So with that being said, there's nothing good to be said to be said about trying to bring a child into the world by yourself. So that's the one of the first things we need to stop and try to reach out to the next generation of young girls coming up to stop this process at all costs. We have to say, you know, find a way to either find some protection to protect yourself, or even better, just don't have sex. Just abstain from it. Keep your legs crossed until you get married. You know, once you're married, and, and there have been studies that show that, that show that if you don't have a child of wedlock, graduate from high school, get whatever little entry-level, low-paying job that you can get, get married, and the two of you combine your, your low-income salaries together, that you're like 95, you have a 95% chance of being middle class in America. Are you rich? No. Do you have a great, fantastic life? No. But you do have a middle class life that you can at least live some of the American dream. You can at least get to that stage and work on the next step. But when you are struggling to get through school and don't finish school or barely get through school and you got a child or two children uh, in your household, you have to stay with your parents, it is hard to come up out of that hole by yourself, especially when there's no guy around to help you or be, be responsible. I would agree with you, Jimmy. And ultimately, it comes down to parenting. It comes down to family. Uh, the other thing that we have to consider is what was happening in the country you know, during that period of time. Um, when you look at, at the country becoming more urban in America. I mean, I am personally one generation from being in the sticks of West Texas. And when you look at the first half of the 20th century, we were more of a rural-based uh, society. <clears throat> Most folks, and in particular within our community, a lot of folks lived in rural areas, lived in the countries. When you had World War II, uh, you get into the 60s and 70s, um, the United States became a lot more urban. People started going into larger cities looking for jobs. Um, our families, which were traditionally at least two or three layers. Otherwise, you have parents and children. You typically have grandparents, uncles and aunts, and possibly even great grandparents who live in the, in the same house or We're close to each other, the same neighborhood. Yes. And that is where we drew the line because it wasn't just the mother and the father trying to raise children, but you had the extended family. And so when we gave up that structure to go find jobs in urban America, we had a split in the traditional black family structure, which was at least two or three layers in terms of family support. So when something happens like this, Jimmy, when you have a situation where, uh, let, let's say they're married, or even if they're not married, you still have aunts, uncles, grandparents, other family members who can help support the child, who can help support the mother or the father, whomever is raising the family. But void of that now, you have no structure. You have no support. And Jimmy, when you talk about those values, getting back to the values that are building family, that are building economy, uh, that are building a future and a vision for our children and for our families, that quiet as it's kept, is just as catastrophic as the male not being in the household, which is catastrophic, but not having that extended, that extended family support 
in place so that they can build a hedge around those parents or parent and the children. Because at the end of the day, children are going to be curious. Once they get to their teens, hormones are going to start raging. They're going to start doing what young people do. And with nobody around to watch them, with nobody around to draw the line, this is what we got. Uh, this is what fathers were used to do, Tom. They used to be disciplinarians in the house and uh, grandparents. In fact, that was one of the studies that I read that it's not just absentee fathers, it's even absentee grandfathers. You know, because you count on your grandparents provide the wisdom of life um, for when you're young and growing up, that you, where you get to learn from their mistakes so you don't have to go out and repeat those same mistakes to learn that lesson. <clears throat> With that time, let's uh, let people know that our our phone line is open. Um, let me see, number 972-497-2280. And I want to apologize to the caller. Last week, um, one of the uh, our chat line notification popped up on the screen that we, um, we streamed from. And so that person's phone number inadvertently got blasted out on our show. We apologize for that. Uh, we made the necessary steps to correct that. So Tom had to move you to another screen. So, um, so feel free to call us um, to call us if you have questions or you have comments and uh, joining the conversation. Also, the uh, the text line is open. If you go to our channel page um, and you can submit your questions there. And actually, the chat line, the text line, is open about 15 minutes before the show starts. So you can submit Good your deal. questions early. And remember, folks, that's nine seven two. 497-2280. We're already 20 minutes in, Jimmy. So let's kind of get down to brass tacks. We've already talked about a couple of things. One, we've got to get fam I mean, our males back in the household, whether that is through marriage or whether that is through indirect parenting. I mean, I grew up, my parents divorced when I was very young, but fortunately for me, my mother and my father maintained a civil relationship even though they didn't stay married to help raise me. And so I, I grew up with my mother and my father in my life. And, and that's significant. It, it is very significant because you're going to need both parents at some point in time in your life for different reasons, uh, emotionally, intellectually, and otherwise. And so, you know, let, let, one, I would agree with you. We've got to put our arms around our sisters, especially our young sisters, build their esteem build their identity, and you know, your, your mothers, they help raise and develop young women to understand what it means to be a woman, but a father comes in and he creates that esteem and that identity for a young lady, so when they're looking for love, they're not falling for the first guy who says, I love you, who's really only trying to get in their pants. That is correct. And you need fathers to have those tough conversations with their daughters to let them know what to look out for, what the pitfalls are, what do you I mean? What, what are some of the things that you're going to run into with these guys out here? Um, but on top of that time, you need strong men to do that. So Absolutely. we also have um, a process going on now, uh, social programming, that is um, basically turning men into punks. You know, this whole weakening of uh, the whole uh, male structure, you know, by making uh, masculinity a crime. You know, so uh, you have this metrosexual movement, you know, it's uh, all the... Leading black men on television now seem to be gay uh, or very, very feminine-like. So uh, those become your new role models, and that's the last thing that we need when we're trying to rebuild. We really need to to work with our young boys to help them become strong young men who are not afraid of responsibility. You know, that R word seems to scare so many people that they don't want to be responsible for a household, they don't want to be responsible for children, for a family, for a wife. And um, these are things that young men should not be afraid of. You should meet these challenges and see that um, these are things that will help you become a better person, a better man, um, when you are a responsible man who provides leadership. And you get to imprint on children and on the next generation your knowledge, your experience, and your wisdom. And But when you're not around to help raise those children, then you leave it to somebody else to shape and mold your children. So the next so generation... Why don't, we do this, Jimmy? Mm -hmm. why don't we talk to the moms out there and to the dads out there who are single parents and kind of start talking through our top-line advice 
on what we must do, uh, because we can kind of talk big picture at the macro level, uh, you know, which we at least began to scratch the surface on. But where the rubber meets the road, we have a lot of mothers out there who are raising their children by themselves. Yeah, Tom, no, I don't know if there's they're, any. They're, they're fortunate if they have the father. They're fortunate, one, if they're taking responsibility to have a civil relationship in spite of the fact that they didn't make it with the father or never got married to the father in the first place. Let's kind of talk to the moms and then let's talk to the dads and then by that time we probably will have to wrap it up. Uh, Tom, unfortunately, I don't know if the current generation can be helped. I'm sorry to say that. Uh, we have to so start... So you lose hope, Jimmy? No hope whatsoever? Uh, we have to start with, with the next generation coming up. Um, you know, it, it is a very tough sell for a woman. And I understand. Um, even if she brings a man to her life who is interested in partnering with her, marrying her, whatever, um, for her to relinquish control that she's had of the family, of the kids, and hand it off to someone else. Um, and because of that, it's very difficult. And some men don't want to deal with the struggle. You know, like, you know, if, I, if we get married and we merge our families, I would like to think that I'm the father for all the kids in our, in our, in our marriage. Yours, mine, whatever. But if they're still your kids, your kids still your kids, and my kids still my kids, and that line can't be crossed, then just marrying and bringing a man into the household in that, in that arrangement still does you very little good. I mean, it's good to see, for young kids to see a successful union, what it looks like, and how to make it work. So that's one thing, but you still need the strong leadership from a man in that union. And we're just not making strong men anymore. So the few strong men are out there are married off or dead. Um, the, the the rest seem to be weak. And in fact, I see I talk to so many guys who seem to be more interested in, in, in be, being a woman like man than being a manly man. They want women to chase them, they want women to pursue them, they want women to ask them out. They don't want to be the aggressor. They don't want to, they don't want to be the leaders in their homes. And for men who are not leaders in their homes, Tom, I haven't, I haven't met one who's, who's happy. Every one of them seems like he's depressed and just two steps away from suicide. The only thing that keeps him going is a chance to get in front of the TV, play PlayStation all day, uh, and watch some sports on the weekend, and, and maybe get some sex every now and then. If it wasn't for that, they either be gone or, uh, or, or, or overdose on some pills or something to get out of this bad situation. Well, there, there are a couple of things that I'd, I'd like to uh, kind of put out there for both the women and the men. And I, I wouldn't say that this is an exhaustive list of things, but let, let's talk to the sisters. and then Okay, let's talk, let's to, talk to them. Go. Yes, yeah, so, so, I mean, I would say for, for the women, the first thing, you know, if you are raising children uh, by yourself and you do have a father in who's living and the child's father is living, you need to do your absolute best to maintain a civil relationship with the child at I mean, around the child. Have a civil relationship with that parent, whether it's a mother raising children or a father raising children. You need to do your absolute best to maintain a civil relationship, especially around that child, because the reality of it is, that's trauma to a child when they see their parents fighting all the time, cussing each other out. I mean, it, it, it creates trauma, and when that child becomes an adult, they have major dysfunction. So it's going to be extremely important that you do the best that you can to maintain a civil relationship and co-parenting your child if you're not in the same household. The second thing, I think girl, women do better than with, with their girl children than they do with their boy children. You need to get your son's mentors. The first mentor should be their father. Now, if their father has got psychological issues, if he is abusive, um, if he's got things that are going to create more harm than help to your, your, your male child or your children in general, I get that. But if that is, that is the case, and you can't bring that father in on a regular basis, you've got to find them mentors, whether that's an uncle, whether that's a grandfather, whether it's putting them in a mentoring program. You have big brothers and big sisters. You have all types of programs out there even folks that are in your community, in the church, and or otherwise, you've got to especially get your sons around other, as Jimmy put it, masculine men. Because at the end of the day, more you more likely than not, the girls grow up 
more mature and more advanced as young men. Yes, they the do. The boys, unfortunately, you know, they're kind of on their own. They're basically going to emulate what they see on TV, what they see in their neighborhood, which may not always be good. You've got to do that. And not the last, but another thing, please, 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 please do not talk about the child's father around the children. He ain't okay. shit, Tom. Huh? He ain't shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> because the reality is, what you're telling, especially that boy child, is if their father isn't worth a, isn't worth a nickel, then that child isn't worth a nickel. That is what you're teaching that child. You cannot afford to badmouth that child's father in front of you, or you're gonna have a problem on your hands. Or Tom, even even if you don't think they're around, you shouldn't you shouldn't do a period. Because kids have a way of hearing things and seeing things, even when you don't know that they're listening in or paying attention, or the attitude that you have. So I agree with your point. Um, I just think it's a tough sell in today's environment. And I think uh, at some point we have to focus our limited resources uh, in the place that we can make the most difference. And Writing off the current generation and starting with the next generation coming up may be our best bet to take a generational approach to solving this. Uh, trying to put band aids on it now. The, current, the mm -hmm. only problem with writing off the current generation, Jimmy, is that basically what we're seeing is cyclical and is intergenerational. And if we write off an entire generation, then guess what's going to happen? Those weeds are going to continue to grow. Yes, they are. Uh, that, that is correct. And so that's part of the trying to bend that, that curve, a curve that growth downward um, and, and start you know, getting, to, you know, getting those 75% down to something a little more socially acceptable. Uh, it's gonna be a, a tough sell, but it's not going to happen today because what's that already happened has happened. Uh, people are pretty set in their ways and it's very difficult to convince adults to change their thinking once they're set. It's much easier to reprogram and imprint on children coming up than to take people who are set in their ways and change them. No, I, I would agree with that. One thing, another thing, especially for mothers, well, no, not it doesn't matter. Mothers and or fathers raising children by yourself You've got to be very cautious about who you bring around your children. And I'm looking at that in two ways. I was very fortunate because both of my parents were very, very frugal in terms of other people that they spent time with or brought into their house. And the reality of it is for a lot of young boys and a lot of young girls, if they have a father or mother who basically has a swinging door of men or women, Coming, coming into and out of their house, that is a recipe for a disaster because one, they lose respect for you as a parent, whether that's a mother or a father. And what are they going to think about themselves if you're the parent and if you're doing this, well, that's condoned behavior for you as a young person. Well, Tom, you're absolutely correct. And I mean, you know, even in my personal life, um, when I got custody, my daughter um, around 12, she was 12 years old at the time. And I had a bit of a revolving door life with women coming and going. Um, and I, I remember taking my daughter to school one day and she said, uh, Daddy, uh, you know, you're a player. And I said, no, <laughs> sweetie, I'm, your dad's one of the good guys. No, I'm not. And I said, well, why would you say that? And she said, because, you know, uh, a player is... I said, well, what, what exactly is a player? You know, she I wanted to make sure that she understood that the, what the con, the term was, and she wasn't thinking it was something else. And, you know, she said, you know, you're one of those guys that have uh, lots of uh, uh, women, and you date a lot of women, and, you know, and, but after I dropped her off, it, I had to start thinking about what I was doing, what kind of message I was sending to her. So I had to change my life right there on the spot uh, to give that life up and bring it to a stop because I certainly could not imprint upon my young daughter who I just got in custody of that this was an acceptable lifestyle. And I certainly didn't want her to go out and in life find a guy that was like, I want 
if she wants to get a guy like her dad and I need to show her what a good man looks like so she'll know and have some kind of reference to uh, the, the, the basin on and a guy with a revolving door of women coming and going is not the kind of guy that you want in your life. So Exactly, um, because ultimately what happens with a lot of young girls, Jimmy, is they're looking for a guy like their dad. Very true, Tom, very true. So that's why I had to change, man. Um, and I had to think about what I was doing, and I had to give up that entire lifestyle and change my ways, um, because just as a single person, it's okay. Uh, as a parent, you can't do it. You have to be very careful. I would agree. Well, let, let's kind of talk to the guys, the, the fathers, and uh, kind of kind of talk about you know what, what what they've got to man up to, what they've got to do. I mean, we talked a little bit about the sisters, and, and they're still on this there, but let's kind of talk about Tom. The, the, the manning up is absolutely correct. Man up. Be a father. If you bring a child into the world, do your absolute best. Even if you're not with the mother, uh, I think you made a good point earlier how you say your father and mother were still involved in your life even if they were not together, that is the next best situation that you can uh, strive for. So don't let the bitterness of a split up or separation keep you out of your children's life. And if you and the mother are not getting along, then y'all need to sit down. You have to take the leadership role here and sit down with her. Apologize if you have to, but make the peace and let her know that we have to be um, peaceful with each other and cordial towards each other, respectful for the children because they cannot see us fighting, arguing, cursing at each other and uh, going at it because they'll think that's the way life is supposed to be between a man and a woman. And we don't want their lives to be jacked up because we can't somehow make this work or could make it work. No, no, you're, you're absolutely right about that, Jimmy. And, you know, just because the parents don't get along, doesn't get along doesn't mean that they can't be civil. Right. Uh, they are adults. Uh, they have a responsibility to that child. When you're single, you have no children, then you can do much, what you want, you know, within reason. But when you become a parent, it is no longer about you. It is about that child. And, and Jimmy, one thing that you said is that we've lost a generation. And I think that is indicative of a generation, not all. But let's say a significant number of parents who have taken no responsibility for their children. They want to have children, but they still want to live the single life. Yes. Do what they want to do. Come in all hours of the day and night. Run people in and out of the house. And it has done a number on our children's psychology. And if it's good enough for the parent, it is good enough for the child. And for those men out there who have a child or children, God forbid you have multiple children by multiple women then it becomes even more complex. Yes. You have a responsibility to get into the lives of your children emotionally and financially. You, it always takes two to tango. You know, I know that's that's the old saying. And the reality of it is, at some point in time, you're going to get old. And your ways are going to end up coming back to you. And you don't want to be a haunting story. But you have a responsibility to ensure that their children understand who their father is, that they love them, that they're taking responsibility. And I guarantee you, once you get to be a mature person and you see what life is really about and mortality becomes real, you want to see something in your life that is worthwhile, that is right. constructive, that is fruitful. And if you've taken no responsibility your entire life, I can tell you that is not going to be a very good story. I mean, we, we've just got to get it done. Well, tell me the other thing is, um, you know, there are, some, there are men out there who are very selfish. And sometimes they will intentionally knock up a woman just to anchor her with a child, knowing that no other man or very few men are going to want to get with her because she has a child. So she is pretty much tied to him while he is free to roam and do what he want to do. And that is very selfish, and you shouldn't do that. Uh, and for men who do that, you, you know, I'm going to just say you're a coward. Well, let's talk about this, Jimmy. Men of all ills, you know, whether it's, 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 it's the brother out there on the street or whether it's the pastor or anywhere in between, we have personally, including you and me, when we see that, we have got to hold these brothers accountable for what they're doing, for their lack of responsibility. And, you know, a lot of times it may not happen when a woman approaches them, but you know what? When the guys approach them, they understand, they look them eye to eye. We have got 
to hold brothers accountable because this is destroying our family structure. It is destroying our community. And the reality of it is, if we're not going to do it, no one else is. And what direction are you going? We have a responsibility as men. When we see somebody else out there, whether it is our blood brother, whether it is our cousin, whether it is our friend or whomever, and we have fun and you know, we, we like cussing, spitting all this other stuff, but we have a responsibility as well to hold our brothers accountable if we know we see them going in a different direction. If they want to go out there, do they think that's one thing? But when they bring children into this world, it's a completely different equation. That is true, Tom. Um, okay, so we are coming up on time. Okay. Um, we were already kind of going over um, a 30 minute allotment by 10 minutes but um, we can certainly go a little longer. And so in the last few minutes, man, let's, um, you know, let's kind of summarize uh, everything and, you know, see what, uh, what, could, what could be the next step for after this. I mean, how do we bring awareness outside of um, our show here? Um, and what should women start looking for in men? And do we need to start uh, defining what a good man is? So you know, uh, do we need to push the message of, uh, of trying not to have uh, children until you get married? Um, is abstinence the uh, the answer, um, or or working with young boys to help them grow into strong men? Um, do we continue to try to throw resources at our current problem, or do we write this current generation off and start focusing on the next generation coming up? Well, Jimmy, I don't think we can afford to write any generation off within our community, unfortunately, because we're so far off. You know, we're going to have to start, you know, at ground level and get back to the basics. There are a couple of things that, you know, I think you nail. Uh, it's not going to be an easy task, but we have got to get our arms. And, and we as black men, even if they're not our daughters, we have got to put our one of our arms around our young sisters, and they do listen to us. And there's a lot of fast young girls out there. Let's be very clear. But we have got to put our arms around our sisters. In addition to our women, teaching them to be responsible. If you want to have children, you need to find a good man who's going to take responsibility for yes. you. Yes. Because one of the problems that we hear is that you have these babies and then the guy goes away. Well, I can almost guarantee you, Jimmy, that, you know what, he probably wasn't doing right by you. And right. if you expect him to do right, to, to not do right by you, but do right by your children that you create with him, you're in some other world. That is true. So we have got to put our arms around our youth. We've got to go back to basics. We've got to teach our young boys to be responsible. We've got to check them when we see them doing silly stuff. And when I say silly stuff, I mean following behind women, allowing women to lead them, but being responsible in a constructive way. With our young sisters, we have got to embrace them and we have got to teach them how to develop healthy relationships with men because that is how you develop healthy relationships with men. Is that is true. Father. Jimmy, in my history, in my life, the women that I've been around who had a father versus those who have not had a father, it is day and night. That is true, Tom. That's absolutely true. communication skills, in terms of how they relate to men, and in terms of their self-identity and their self-esteem. That is true. Uh, you have 100% correct, Tom. And so men are black men out there, um, especially from our generation, we have to become more vocal. We have to uh, speak up. And we have to get a little more involved, not just in our children's lives, but in other uh, children that may not have the benefit of a strong male in their life. And so you know, we can't just hide in our houses anymore, hide our head in the sand and pretend that the uh, the world will take care of itself. Uh, the only thing that's going to take care of itself is when we take care of the issue and stop allowing young knuckleheads to drive our culture, in which uh, they're driving into the ground. So if this is going to change, Tom, then it's going to take a lot of effort from strong black men such as ourselves to get more involved, even more so than uh, ever before. I would agree, Jimmy, and, and, and the one thing that you said is it starts with us. I, I, in my opinion, yes. it starts with us. The sisters have been running our households 
have been running our families, and therefore, Jimmy, you know, have been running our communities. The only place where you're going to typically see a man leading is in the church. church. In but, the church. But you have to understand, Jimmy, even when you see a man at the pulpit, usually it's the women who are getting the work done. Yes, oh, but that's true. Not getting off track. It has to start with us. We have to hold ourselves accountable, starting with each of us individually, and we've got to man up with our other brothers to take more responsibility. And even if that means sometimes, you know, taking time to sit down and talk with a young brother, sit down and talk with a young sister, showing, as you put it, adult male responsibility without looking for anything, right, without looking true. to be praised, you know, without looking to get a trophy for, for cleaning up your room and doing stuff you should be doing anyway. True. So true, Tom. So true. So, um, we're coming up on the end. Let me see. Let me check the, the message board here. Um, yeah, do we have any questions? Well, we had one listener who said she's having a hard time hearing you. Although we have the mics at max capacity and the, um, the sound coming up. I don't know if there was, um, you know, we've had that before in the past. So we may look at see if we maybe get you a different, some different technology, maybe a different yeah, mic. I may, I, may have to get, I may have to get a microphone. I have to get a mic um, and maybe uh, maybe you know pin one to your uh, collar or have one as directional as opposed to the mic on a uh, computer or uh, a tablet device that picks up all the ambient sound around. So we may need something that's, that's directed just at you and that focuses on human voice as opposed to other frequencies. Um, so um, there were no callers. Um, so we want to. Take this moment, Tom, let's go ahead and wrap up. Let's thank everyone for watching. Uh, we have had an increase in viewership. So we want to say thank you to the uh, for all our new subscribers. Please spread the word. We are here every Wednesday, 9 p.m. Central Standard. Uh, like I said, uh, you can uh, join the chat uh, board and send your questions in early if you have questions. And uh, the phone line opens up at 9.05, and it stays open until we... Uh, in the show, uh, generally around 9.30, 9.45, but sometimes we keep the chat line open, the phone line open to, until maybe even 10 o'clock sometimes. So, uh, so but feel free to join the conversation. So um, this is not just a conversation between Tommy and I, it's a conversation we want to have with you guys also. So feel free to join in. If there's any other way that we can include you in the conversation, please let us know. And if you leave us a message or a comment, we will respond to your comment um, in kind. Time to give you the last word. You know, I'll keep it very brief and to the point. Um, you know, we started this conversation about single parent households and the uh, the issues and the challenges that we have. Um, our, our community is at stake. It is. Uh, economically, politically, socially, and yes. otherwise. And I, I don't see an answer uh, to your point that doesn't involve Black men. That is true. They're the key. Reintegrating a, a what we call what do we what do we call it uh, when like urban areas. Uh, the, I, I don't want to say gentrified, <laughs> but we literally got mellified. To go and black men have to go back and regentrify our damn families. Yes, they do, Tom. We've got to regen. Black men have to regentrify our families. We've got to rebuild, and it starts with the male. For black men are in prison. When you, when you, if you're in prison, take that time to invest in yourself. Not just learn how to become a better criminal. Get an education, learn, learn a trade while you're in there. Do something positive. Um, when you come out, go back to your family. Go back to your children. And then find a way to get a job, live an honest life, and give back to your family, give back to your children, give back to society. Uh, that's what you can do. So, and then for other fathers out there that are not in jail, go back and reclaim your children. Like you said, Tom, we've got to find a way to reintegrate black men to be fathers and husbands and role models for, the, uh, for their offspring. Uh, I'm with you, man, 110%. So, with that being said, we will be back next Wednesday, 9 p.m. Central Time, and uh, feel free to uh, join us. Do we have a topic for next week, or are we uh, are we still uh, voting on the next topic? You know, we uh, we had a couple of topics that were dangling out there. Let me see if we have something. 
on my list here. See here, because we've, we've been talking about the black family. Uh, we kind of narrowed that down a little bit and talked about uh, single parenting. Oh, you know what? We were supposed to talk about the uh, the fathers next week. Today, the, today's show is supposed to get more towards the mothers, and so next week was going to be the uh, the fathers. Yeah, actually, you're right. The responsibility of the black man in turning around our community. So I, I think we kind of began having that conversation today, but next week, the responsibility of black men in turning around our communities. Okay, and I want to, before we leave time, last week we had a comment from um, someone on the, uh, the chat line that thought we were being overly harsh towards the women in our comments. And, you know, we, we talked about it a little bit after the show, and, and, I, and I said we were going to address it on this week's show. Uh, All right. I think Let's we were fair and balanced last week and our criticism towards both men and women uh, in the relationship. And I thought we were leaving a little harder towards the men because we put the onus on them to maintain the relationship. It's their responsibility. If a relationship goes bad, it's more his responsibility than her responsibility. So with that being said, I'm not sure how the, uh, the viewer thought that we were giving the men a pass and being too hard on the women. Well, maybe they maybe they took a, a drink of water and used the restroom while we were talking about the brothers. I don't know. Okay. Okay, well, <laughs> if that caller or, or that person will join us next week, it'll be, it'll be an entire show focusing on the uh, role, responsibility of the black man, um, the damage that he's done by not being available for his kids and his family, and what he has to do going forward. We will leave women out of the conversation. This will be 100% black men. And um, so you should be pleased if you thought we were not um, criticizing the black men enough last week. Come come next week, and it will be 100% black men. Done deal. Done deal. Okay. Uh, with that being said, we're out. Um, and we want to thank everyone, and we'll see you next week. Good evening, everyone. Hmm, okay. Uh, seven.